Hello, my name is James Yang from YBC. Today we will be evaluating the economy of Malaysia. This middle-income country has transformed itself since the 1970s from a producer of raw materials into an emerging multi-sector economy. The country aims to achieve high income status in the coming years. However, before striving on to further development, Malaysia must venture to attain all four macroeconomic objectives, price stability, economic growth, full employment, and the biggest concern of Malaysia, equity. Ranked 29th in the world, the GDP purchasing power of Malaysia in 2014 was 746.8 billion US dollars. With just the GDP, many people will assume Malaysia is a rich nation However, the GDP per capita purchasing power was merely 24,500 US dollars in 2014. This is 71st in the world. Malaysia's GDP has been growing at a fast rate from 673.3 billion US dollars in 2012 to 705.2 billion US dollars in 2013 and 746.8 billion US dollars in 2014. In 2012, the growth rate was estimated to be 5.6%, 4.7% .6 in 2013, and 5.6% in 2014. Many economists state that the desirable rate of growth is between 2 to 3%. However, Malaysia, with a growth rate at a whopping 5.6% in 2014, is almost twice as much the desirable range. A high growth rate often indicates an expansion period in the business cycle, a model that shows the short-run periods of contractions and expansions in output, resulting from fluctuations in the level of aggregate demand. With this diagram, we can forecast Malaysia's economy to soon enter a period of recession. Inflation has risen from 2013 to 2014 from 2.1% 2 to 3.1% respectively. This is at the desired range for many countries. Malaysia is doing a great job of keeping the inflation rate low. A low inflation rate provides consistent price stability, which is one of the four main macroeconomic goals. It also increases the public's ability to make accurate economic and financial decisions. Malaysia also has a rather low unemployment rate of 3.1% which is one of the four main macroeconomic objectives. Unemployment is defined as the state of an individual who is of working age, actively seeking work, but unable to find a job. Low level of unemployment shows that the use of nation's resources, capital, and labor force is very efficient and very close to the optimal level. In addition, Malaysia is experiencing an expansion in output because of the rise in confidence between companies. This makes it easier for individual workers to find jobs. We can anticipate employers to offer higher wages to workers with specialized skills in the upcoming years. Now, the Gini Index, which shows the distribution of wealth among the people of Malaysia, does not show the greatest signs. With a Gini Index of 46.2 from 2009, which is still growing at this moment, is the greatest concern to the Malaysian economy. The lower the Gini Index, the more equity. Malaysia has ranked 33rd from the highest Gini index. If we take a look at the Lorenz curve of Sweden and Malaysia, we can see a vast difference between the two countries, where Sweden has a fairly equal distribution of wealth and Malaysia does not. Some of the consequences Malaysians will see due to the high Gini index include a great number of shanty towns, slums, and increasing numbers of crime. Malaysia is suffering to meet the macroeconomic objective of equal income distribution despite the implementation of free education and free healthcare reminiscing of the UK and many other EU countries, the wealth distribution has not gotten any better. Currently spending on 13.7% of the nation's GDP for public goods, Malaysia's government must increase its spending to a level that achieves both higher economic growth and equity. To recapitulate Malaysia's economy, it is growing at a fast rate with a high employment rate and low inflation. 
However, Malaysia is struggling to achieve equal income distribution. This was James Yang from Yang's Broadcasting Channel. Thank you and join me again for more economic news.